All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, put your hands up. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm just here to tell you, you know, single ladies, enjoy your singleness. Married women, enjoy your marriedness. Just enjoy. Take your time. Um, if you're single, go do stuff you like doing. Um, go to the museum, the African museum. Learn, learn about your ancestors. Learn about powerful women. And um, learn to walk in your power um just take your time and enjoy you do special stuff for you cook yourself special dinners wear special clothes just for you i have a friend who um even when she was single she would wear special negligee just to go to bed by herself uh do candle lights by the tub. You have candle candlelit baths. Um I always have you know what? If you don't have a man to treat you special, you treat you special. Hey, hey. Buy yourself nice things. Buy yourself nice jewelry. So when you do get with a man, he'll know what you like. He'll know how you think of yourself. Um, and like I say, you know, go, go places, go to concerts, develop friendships among other women, even develop friendships with men, but just make sure, don't mess yourself up. Do not have sex too quickly with anyone. Did you know that if you have sex, did you know that we women... Our pelvic region is a very special region. That is where a lot of power stems from. And ooh, if you give that away, whoever you give it to, he'll be doing so well. He'll be so happy. You know, the ne the following day, he'll be able to do so much. And um, you just have to save that for you. You have creative energy. You know, I had a friend one time, a, a, a really cool friend, and she said um, before she got married, and if somebody begged her for sex or something like that, she would hold on. She don't care. She don't care how bad she wanted to have sex. She wouldn't give in until she found the right guy. And being married to him, she tries to always meet his needs. But um, don't let your desires overtake you, I think was her message to me. You know, well, just, you know, what was what she was revealing to me. Um, Just please take care of yourself. You are so precious. Y'all are so precious. Y'all are so, so, so precious. Develop this. Your mind controls you. Your thoughts control you. Put, you know, you tell yourself what to think. You can tell yourself what to think. Um... Even if it's false, you're going to believe you. Your mind believes you. But if you fight it, if you, if I tell you to say, I am rich. And you say, no, I can't say that. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. So go ahead and say, um, I am small. I don't, I, I only weigh 140 pounds. I know to some people, they say that's a lot, but for some people, that's perfect. And that would be perfect for me. So anyway, I weigh 140 and keep that feeling, have the feeling, don't just have the thought, have the feeling that goes with it too. I weigh 140 and then 
from 140, from whatever you are now, 300 something, there is a gap between 300 and 140. And what do you do? To get to 140, I have to go walking every day. If you decide to be a vegan, go ahead, be a vegan. If you don't decide to be a vegan, just sort of um, fill your plate fill your plates with more vegetables than usual and make the meat intake a little smaller. I got to tell the truth on me. I know most people wouldn't even say it. Um, I was on a vegan journey and kind of fell off because we had guests over and I didn't want to seem anti-social. Wow. Now that's revealing. I'm glad I told on myself. Even old people uh, go through peer pressure so I can imagine what it is for older people uh, younger people but um, anyway fill your plate full of uh, start eating more vegetables than usual I promise you that's a good skincare routine drinking water is good for your skin drinking water is good for the hair and um, just take care of you and it'll show it, it will show when you meet someone, they're going to want to be around you. You're going you're gonna to have magnetism. When you start loving on you, you, met, you, you radiate that love. And people that come within uh, that radius around you can feel it. I'm telling you, we more than flesh and blood. We are more than flesh and blood. I promise I believe that. And that's where I talk about spiritual matters. Not so much religious. Spiritual matters. Um, how are you inside? How are you thinking? You know, if you think negatively about someone, they can. they know it. They know it. So you need to change your perception toward others and think positively toward others. And you also, if you can think positively toward others, you can think positively toward you. You the bomb. And, and it's a shame when other people can see that you're, that you're beautiful, but you don't know it. Just because you are a few pounds more than you would like to be, then you think you're not worthy? You are. You are. You worth every breath you take. Overweight and all. You got to love yourself while you're big. And then that weight will melt off. Enjoy yourself while you're big. I mean, life ain't no... I, I know this is cliche, but life ain't no dress rehearsal. You got to live. If... um. If being in large cities downtown turns you on, then go downtown around those places because there is an energy down there. There's a, a live energy down there. You see people um, by the river walking um, in the malls and stuff. Get in it. If you like it, do it. If you like your hair a certain way, then you fix your hair a certain way. That's for you. And believe it or not, there are other people who are going to like it too. And if they don't, boo-hoo, but it's good. It's always good when they do because that affirms you. So I want you to love yourself no matter how you look because it's other people who look like you. And if you seem like you're fine with it, then you're making other women strong. So go ahead, please, and love yourself. Even if you're 300 pounds, if you're 400 pounds, the poundage don't determine how much you love you. Don't let it determine how much you love you. And do your self-talk. Tell yourself you are wonderful. Tell yourself you are beautiful. I mean, you don't have to have a $200 blouse on and a $500 skirt. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is like what you have on. All you have to do is meet your own approval. If you approve of what you look like in the mirror when you leave home, 
then there should be no more discussion about it once you get out. It's done. It's a done deal. Don't be out trying to pull at your clothes or trying to stoop down, trying to slump down or something like that so you don't be seen because you're seen. You're just seen as a person slumping down and you're telling the world, you're giving out um, vibes and you're telling the world how to think about you and how to treat you. So be sure to treat yourself well and treat others well. They deserve to be treated well. And you know something I don't like? And I noticed this years ago. I don't like um, people who, who are always talking about black power in the way that we talk about it today, but yet treat black people badly. How can you say you're for, you're for black people, but then you treat your own people badly? You got to look at people and smile. Look at them in their eyes and smile and, and give them a pick up. Excuse me. Pick them up for the day. You'll be surprised at what a smile can do. Just a smile is so affirming. You know what it does for you. So, I mean, give other people confidence. Do you know what you give to other people's Excuse me, do you know what you give to other people you give to yourself? Isn't that beautiful? So if that's the case, you only want to give out the best you got. Just give out the best you got. And some people do stuff that you don't like, but practice forgiveness. Because you need to forgive for your own sake. You're not going to hurt yourself forgiving people. You, I didn't say you had to forget what they did, but forgive them. Because if you don't, then it'll weigh you down. And if you do forgive them, you have a more of a bouillant uh, quality to yourself. People who don't forgive get old and wrinkly and crackled. But people who do forgive have a better appearance. They look more like... um happy and I don't know they attract people to them if you don't forgive then other people are not attracted to you and you can't attract you cannot attract a man because I had gotten off of the subject didn't I um, to attract a man you you need to be happy you need to forgive people and don't talk to a man about your baggage. Leave the baggage off. Somebody that you want, don't even tell him the negative. Try, try to stay positive. Don't tell a man how you like to be treated because that they, they're going to try to do everything that they can to treat you well the, right away so you'll drop your panties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm don't need to drop your panties no 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 mm -mm. keep that for yourself that's all for you and it's for your future husband ladies who are married never ever 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 disgrace yourself by being um, unfaithful to your husband because that would not only bring him shame, but it would bring, bring shame on you. So, ladies who are dating, if you have sex too fast, a man will, a man could possibly think, oh, you, she's not right. Because, so, she would probably um, have sex on me. You know, if we were married, if she can't hold on, you know, to something as valuable as that, then she might um, be untrue to me. So just keep your head in the game when you're dating. Think about what you're doing and how that looks. Um, what, a, what a simple man will surmise because of it. You know, men, men think simply. A lot of them do. But anyway, um, just be you and be happy. But be the best you that you can be. Be the best you you can be before you get married. And then that way you'll attract a good one. You'll attract a good husband from your being the best you can be.
And a man don't want no uh, empty woman. He don't want an empty woman who can't, you know, can't do nothing. I, I'm not religious, but I know you don't believe it. But um, I love the Proverbs woman. The Proverbs woman is independent. I don't have the verses handy, but it said something about she sells. I think they said she sells her wares like um, she sews purple raiments, meaning purple clothes, and she sells them in the town, and um, they call her husband blessed. She sells, she gives to her servants. She, of course, you you know she take care takes care of her, her household, her children, and her husband. And even, you know, as a married woman, did you know your husband comes before your kids? Hate to tell you, but he does. But the kids are, can still be well taken care of. And um, anyway, the Proverbs woman, she sells. So that means she's an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is blessed because as an entrepreneur, you can make as much money as you feel like making, as your health will allow. So you want to take real good care of your health. Let him see that because then he'll know that you're going to take good care of his health. And I'm not that old fashioned where I say, oh, the woman got to coddle over a man like you, like you're his mother. Uh -uh. But um, I hate to say it, but, you know, you take care of each other. And I hate to say it, but my husband said, hmm. I noticed last night you coughed more than usual. Okay, I got to take note of that. And then I'll tell him, oh, I noticed that um, you're taking too many things to heart. Like um, he'll get mad at other drivers and stuff like that. And I get concerned about that because I don't believe in getting angry over stuff that you can't, you can't change. You can't do, you don't have anything to do with. There's nothing that you can do about it. So, I mean, just let it flow, you know, just stay in good vibes. So anyway, yeah, take good care of yourself and stuff. And then a man will see that, you know, you would make a suitable mate. Um, make sure you cook well and healthy and stuff like that. Um, sewing is good. Making jewelry is good. Um, sewing, making jewelry. Um, just getting a skill. I mean, even if you don't know, if you don't have to be a computer geek, but at least know the basics of using a computer because that's what's up from now on. Uh, you do need a skill. You need a skill. I mean, you need a skill. You need a skill. You need something that can earn you money and earn you money, real money. You're going to need money, money, you do, it's, it's the truth, you need real money, and real money would be between $500 to $1,000 a week right now in 2017, I don't know how long, how old this video would be by the time whoever is looking at it, but right now in 2017, you need to be earning like $500 to $1,000 a week, and you need to commit to that, and you need to tell yourself you deserve the best, and you need to tell yourself that you deserve the best, and you need to make up your mind that you're going to have the best. You have to, the, everything comes from here first. Tell yourself, I want the best, I deserve the best, I have the best. And even though you don't have it right now, it's coming to you because this right here, when you go to sleep at night, is going to figure out how to make certain things come. And when you're eating right and when you're spiritually right, you can hear the voice of the creator telling you, you know, showing you things that you wouldn't have necessarily seen, especially if you drink alcohol that's not good for you. You need to uh, exercise and eat right. And then things will come to you during your sleep, during your wake hours, and everything. I mean, I get ideas that I'm like, wow, I never would have thought of that. Wow. It's, it's, it's money all around you. People are saying that money is scarce. That's a lie. Money is not scarce. It's money all around you. 
and you have to figure out how to earn it honestly. Honesty is the way to go. It's the only way to go. Only way to go. Trust the thought. That's the only way. So, I love you dearly. Oh, and another thing that goes right back to treating people fairly, that goes right back to what we were saying about look at yourself in a positive way. If you're looking at others in a positive way, you won't misuse people. Mm -mm. Can't. Don't want to. I don't want to. I got a lady in my life right now who don't like me for no reason that I could think of. I don't know. And I've even gone to her because I have to be around her a lot. And so I've even gone to her and said, have I done something? Because I don't want us to have this in between us. And she said, no. Mm -mm. She's younger than me. So she'll say, no, Miss So-and-so. No, Miss Ginger. Oh, how I hate that word. I don't like that. I just want to be referred to as Ginger. And people say, well, my, mo my mother would kill me if she heard me heard me say that but your mother ain't around and you talking to me and I you know I prefer to be called ginger so I think that how how a person tells you they want to be referred to as should be the governing factor of how you re how you refer to them but anyway um yeah that all goes back to um if you think about yourself positively then you should think about others positively and even though somebody like i'm telling you does me wrong somehow or other i don't i don't get a bad attitude and somehow or other it never works out for her she never she never can just go ahead and get a grip on me and i won't just sit there and be bitter you know like I can go around, she can come around me and then don't even speak. You know, it's just common courtesy. Don't even speak. Hello. Good afternoon. Don't even. But I don't get better because I know um, that that could cause illness. Being mad can cause you to be ill. And um, I know one lady who was so bitter and I kept talking to her about it. I gave her books to read. 20, 30 years ago, I gave her books to read. She was like, by the time I get done reading this book, such and such and such and such could have happened. You know, and she wouldn't read. She wouldn't try. I said, well, just look at it positively. I'm going to look at stuff like it really is. And um, right in her, in the pit of her stomach, she got ill. She got ill. She got cancer and died. And so that's why I'm telling you, don't be bitter toward people. Forgive people. I didn't say forget. I said forgive. And um, just keep on, just just let it roll. Because if you do what's right, everything going to work out good. Real good. I don't know if um, the religion that people practice is true or not. I don't know. I just feel like um, whatever you do to people is what you is what comes back to you. So um, make sure you're fair and make sure you treat people loving. And if you don't feel like you can, get out from around them. Just be fair to people. Don't misuse people. And more important than that, be happy. Find things to be happy about. How do you do that? Gratitude. Be grateful. If you get a cheeseburger one day, one of those um, cheeseburgers that don't have the meat in it with mushrooms, okay, yeah, you can get, you can do, you can do meat if you want. But um, if you get a cheeseburger, say, "Thank you, Creator, for this cheeseburger." Or if you make a smoothie, be just be grateful for little things. Just you know, just have that that air of gratitude ab ab about you, and you'll get more. So basically, I just want you to know that I love all of you. All. I love you, and um, I want you well. 
and just do the best you can for yourself and always, always, always remain positive. And the, all those good things you want, they'll come. I promise you they'll come. Love you. Bye.